In this video, we're going to look at fitting a multiple linear regression model with just two x variables. First, we'll look at the model when both x1 and x2 are numeric variables. Then, we'll look at how the model looks like when one of them, x1, is numeric and the other variable, x2, is categorical. We've already talked about these conceptually in a previous video. Now, we're going to look at fitting these models in R. A quick reminder that we're working with this FEV data which is measuring lung capacity of use, um, and the main variable of interest is if they smoke or not. So first, I'm just going to read in that data again. And a reminder, we can check the variable names. We have age, FEV, or um, lung capacity, that's our outcome variable, height, biological sex, and an indicator if they smoke or not. Smoke is coded as 0 for no, 1 for yes, and biological sex is coded as 0 for female, 1 for male. Now a reminder, previously we saw that R is going to treat sex and smoking as integer variables unless we tell R that they're factors. And that's because it was coded using 0, 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to do that here. And also a note, depending on how you're reading in the data, if you're using the import data set tab over here to read in data, there are options on import to let R know that these zeros and ones are coding for categories or factors. So you might not need to do this step. Now let's just quickly confirm that those were changed to factors. We can see that R is returning that there's 589 non-smokers, 65 smokers. So that looks right. So let's attach the data. And again, as mentioned previously, it's better to work with not attaching the data if you're comfortable that way and using the dollar sign to extract variables instead. I'm going to work with attaching the data because visually it's a bit easier to look at on the screen and um, I'm doing it mainly for teaching purposes. Okay, so let's get into multiple linear regression. First, we're going to look at the case when we have two x variables, both of them being numeric. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use x variables of height and age. So to visualize this, I'm going to make a 3D scatter plot. And I want to mention, you don't need to do this, it's not necessary, but it's a nice handy way to visualize the data. In order to do that, you're going to need to install this RGL package. And again, if you're having trouble installing the package, don't worry about it. Producing this plot is not necessary, it's just nice. Once it's installed, we're going to load the library, so I'll go ahead and do that here. Okay, now, in order to make the 3D plot, or the plot using the three variables, we use the plot3d command. Okay, I'm going to plot x variable of height, x variable of age, and then y variable of FEV. This color blue is I'm just telling R to make the points a blue color, and size 2 make the points a little bit larger to see. Now, I want to mention, some of you might have trouble with making this plot if you're working on Mac, you need to have x quartz installed. Um, you probably do, but you might need to install it or you might need to update it. I'm not too sure how it works on Windows. So if you're struggling to make this plot, just speak to someone on the teaching team in class or just don't worry about it. It's not necessary to be able to make these plots. Let's go ahead and take a look at the plot. I'm going to submit this command here. Let's expand this. Okay, we can see we have the height axis, the age axis, and the FEV or lung capacity axis. Okay, now it's pretty cool, this package, you can take this and rotate this, okay, to visualize the 3D scatter plot of the data. All right, so again, what we're gonna try and do is fit a model to this data. We're gonna try and fit a plane, or we can think of slicing a piece of paper through this data and trying to find what flat plane or what you know flat piece of paper can slice through this to describe the relationship that height and age have with FEV. So let's take a look at fitting the model in R. To do so, I'm going to save it in something called model1, and we're going to use the exact same commands that we've used previously, except we have two x variables. So we're going to fit a linear model estimating FEV using age and using height. So let's fit that model. Then we can ask for a summary of the model, and we can see that here. Here's the intercept for the model, negative 4.61. Here's the slope or the coefficient for age, and here's the slope or coefficient for height. Right? And again, in a previous video, we looked at having these numeric values for the model and interpreting them. But just a quick reminder there, the kind of direct interpretation of this age coefficient is that when age increases by one year, we'd expect the FEV to increase by 0.054 liters, adjusting or accounting for the height. The interpretation of this height coefficient, right, when height increases by one inch, we would expect the FEV to increase by about 0 0.1097 um, liters, adjusting or accounting for the age of the individual. And then we've mentioned that this age effect and this height effect 
might be stuck together a little bit. We'll talk a little bit more as the course goes on about um, exactly how we want to interpret these coefficients or not interpret them. Oh, and before we move on, just a quick reminder of the interpretation of this multiple r squared. Knowing the age and the height of the individual explains about 76.64% of variability in FEV or lung capacity. Okay, now let's take a look at fitting a model when one of the x variables is numeric and one of them is categorical. And again, a reminder that in a previous conceptual video, we fit these models, we talked about their concepts, and we use the model equation that we're going to fit right now in R. So for the sake of demonstration or discussion, we're going to fit a model that uses x1 of age and x2 of biological sex. First, I'm going to start by fitting a 3D plot through that again. So we're going to use x variable of age, x variable of sex, and y variable of FEV. PCH is the plotting character, so I'm just going to use a different plotting character, and I'm going to make them blue. Let's take a look at the plot here. Okay, and again, we can see here's the age axis, here's the sex axis, and this is the FEV or lung capacity. I'm going to rotate it a bit. We can see with categorical variables, we're actually not having a continuous variable here. Things take on a value of 0 or 1, right? female or male. While we're fitting a model to three-dimensional data here, we can actually think of it as we want to fit a regression line for the females and a separate regression line for the males. I'm going to go back and make the same plot as this, but rather than having it be 3D, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the points for males and the points for females different color and have them all sitting on one scatter plot with age and FEV. So let's just take a look at that. So to do so, what I'm going to do is plot the age versus the FEV, and here I'm telling R to subset. Okay, take only those whose sex equals to 1, or the males. Okay, I'm going to add a title. I'm going to rotate the values on the y-axis. I'm going to give it an X label and a Y label. I'm going to make the points blue, so these will be the points for males, and plotting character 16. Okay, so we can see this is the scatter plot of age versus FEV only for males. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add points onto this plot using the points command. Okay, so this is the way we can add additional points to an existing plot. I'm going to plot the age versus the FEV, again, subsetting only for those whose sex is zero or those who are female. Okay, I'm going to use plotting character one. I'm going to use a slightly different plotting character, and I'm going to make um, the color magenta. So let's add those here. Okay, so we can see now the blue points are for the um, males and the pink points are for the females. Okay, now just a side note, I'm not going to get into this, but it's in the code. You can explore it if you want. You can make this exact same plot using um, a package called ggplot2. This makes plots a lot nicer in some ways. So I'll just show you what that looks like, and you can explore ggplot a little bit more on your own. Okay, but see here, it's coded. The red points are for zero or females, and the bluish points are for males. I'm not really going to spend time discussing that, but ggplot2 is a really great package and worth exploring if you have the time and will and energy to do so. Let's talk about fitting a model to this data. First, I'm going to fit a model that assumes no interaction or no effect modification. Again, these are just words right now. That's a topic we'll discuss in another lecture or two about what exactly does it mean for there to be interaction or effect modification. So here, we're going to fit a model that's forced to have parallel lines. That's no interaction or no effect modification. We're going to fit a linear model estimating FEV using age and biological sex. And I'm going to store it in something called M1, care okay, model 1. So I'll fit that model. And now let's take a look at a summary of the model. Okay, now this is the model coefficients that we were working with in the previous video where we talked about the concepts of fitting a model when one variable is numeric, one variable is categorical. And so the intercept is 0 0.28, the coefficient for age is 0 0.22, and the coefficient for sex is 0 0.32. Reminder, the multiple R squared, knowing the age and biological sex of the individual, explains about 60.7% of variation in their FEV or lung capacity. And we can use this model here to identify the two regression lines, the one that we fit to males and the one that we fit to females. In the previous video, we worked out those numeric values, so I'm just going to jump to working with those. We saw in that previous video explanation 
that the regression line for the females would have an intercept of 0 0.2814 and a slope of 0 0.22. So I'm going to add that line to the plot. LTY is line type, so I'm going to use line type 1, and LWD is line width. Okay, I'm just going to make the width 3 or a much thicker line than the default. So we can see that's the regression line that we fit to the female data. And now I'm going to add the line for males. And again, in that previous video, we saw that the intercept for the males would be 0.2814 plus 0.323, and the slope would be 0 0.22. I'm going to make this line blue, and again, the same line type and line width. Okay, so those are the two regression lines we fit, one for males and one for females. And a reminder that the way we fit this model, we've forced those two lines to be parallel. In following lectures, we'll expand on the difference between parallel and non-parallel lines, or no interaction versus interaction, or no effect modification versus effect modification. For now, let's just roll with the idea that we can force lines to be parallel, or we can allow them to have different slopes. We'll expand on what that means shortly. Now, we're going to fit a model that allows for interaction or effect modification. And to do so, we're going to fit a linear model that uses age, biological sex, and age times sex. Okay, so this here is the interaction or effect modification term. And again, in following videos, we'll expand on this idea. So let's fit the model. Take a look at the summary. Okay, and again, we can see here's the model coefficients. These are the, the model that we worked with in the previous video where we explained the concepts. A reminder of this R squared value. This model that we fit can explain 64.25% of variability in FEV or lung capacity. In following lectures, we'll talk about how do we decide which model is better, the one with interaction or without. For now, let's just look at adding this model to the plot so we can visually see what it looks like. So again, in that previous video, we worked out the equation of the regression line that we fit for males and females. We saw for females, it would have an intercept of 0.85, a slope of 0.16. I'm going to add this, and I'm going to use line type 2. Okay, so this is going to be a dashed line. So that dashed line... There is the line that we'd have fit to the female data when we allow for interaction or effect modification. And here's the regression line that would be fit to the male data. Again, this would be the intercept and the slope, and we worked that out in the previous video. So let's just take a look at that a little bit bigger. Okay, so we said when we're fitting one uh, regression model with one numeric variable and one categorical variable, we can think of the categorical variable as breaking the data into groups. In this case, the variable is just male or female, so it broke it into two groups. If there were three or more categories, we'd be breaking the data into three or more um, groups. And then we're fitting a line to each of those. And so here is when we talked about forcing the lines to be parallel, or there's no interaction. The dashed lines are when we allow the two groups to have a different slope. And here we allow for interaction. Again, a topic we'll expand on a bit more in following videos and following lectures.